Hey there, thanks for joining me again for another tutorial. Last time, we looked at how we can test an HTTP handler for fetching a logged in user's personal information, the me endpoint. You can see this in the leftmost box in the diagram. Today, we'll add and test our first method in the service layer. This will be the get method of the user service, which is highlighted in the diagram. We'll reuse many of the principles from the last tutorial, so you may find it useful to go back and watch the previous video. Or, you may find it useful to go take a look at the written tutorials in the written series linked in the video description. If you were able to grasp the last tutorial, today's should be a breeze as we'll be using the same principles, but actually writing a bit less code. So let's get started by creating a user service in the service layer. To do so, we'll create a new services folder and add a user underscore service dot go file inside of it. So here is the service folder and user underscore services dot go. Next, I want to initialize this service in a similar manner to how we initialized our handler, handler layer. So let's go ahead and add some code, which I'll then explain. We create the user service by adding a user service struct and including the required dependencies. So far, our only dependency is this user repository, as this is the only repository that our get method will need to be able to work. Notice that we inject an interface of the user repository from the model layer. Let's take a look at this definition to remind ourselves what it contains. As you can see, this interface currently only expects a find by ID method, but we'll certainly be adding more than methods later. Now let's return to our user service dot go file. At the bottom, you'll see that we create a new user service factory. This factory is used for creating an instance of our user service struct. Take note that we are returning the interface user service, which is defined in our model layer. We get a red squiggly line here because our user service does not implement the methods defined on the user service interface. So let's go to the model.user service interface to remind ourselves what we've defined so far. I'll control click, and you can see that our user service interface has a get method. So we need to define this get method on our actual user service implementation, which we're working on right now. Down at the bottom of this user services.go file, let's add the implementation. Yes, this really is the entire implementation for getting a user inside of the service layer. You may say, well, that's great that we created all of this boilerplate to write such a simple method. Didn't you say the service layer was for handling business logic? Uh, yeah, I did say that. But in some cases, there won't actually be that much logic, and we basically just forward a method call to the next layer or the repository layer. Later on, though, we'll write much more complex business logic and access multiple repositories from inside of service methods. So let's move on to testing this method. If you look inside this get method, we're accessing the user repositories find by ID method. Therefore, we need to create a mock implementation of this user repository with the find by ID method included. We covered this in detail in the last tutorial, so please check out the last video or written tutorial if you need to review. So, let's create a user repository.go file inside of the mocks folder. And we'll do this as we did for the user service. And you'll recall the user service was injected into the handler layer. So I'll now add the code for this mock, which you can find in the GitHub repository if I go over it too fast. All right, here's some code. See here that we create a mock user repository definition with a mock from the testify library included. 
We then create a findbyid method to implement the user repository interface. Findbyid uses methods provided by the testify library to record method calls and responses. We'll now write our test of the user services get method, which will make use of this mock. So let's create a user service test file right next to our user service.go file. So back in the service layer, I'll right click new file, user underscore service underscore test dot go. We'll first include a single outer function and import the testing library from go. We'll call this function test get. Inside of this function, we'll add two test cases inside of t.run methods. One for a successful call to the user repository or a call which returns a user, and another for the case when the user repository returns an error. Let's go ahead and add the first test case. All right, I've added the first test case and included all of the necessary imports, which my development environment does for me, thank goodness. And inside of this test case, we do a handful of things. First, we're going to create a UID from the UUID library new random method, which creates a V4 UUID as you see here. Next, we're going to create a mock user response, which will be returned from our call to the user repositories find by ID method, or I should say the mock user repositories find by ID method. We then instantiate a mock user repository from the mock we just created. We then inject this mock user repository implementation into our user service with the new user service factory. In the following line, we tell the mock user repository to respond with a mock user response when the find by ID method is called with the UID that we added at the top of this method. Finally, we call our user service.get method and assert that the response is the mock user response in this line. We also assert that no error is returned for the second return value of this method. And then this last line is to assert that the mock user repositories find by ID method was indeed called. So that's our test for the success case. Let's go to our terminal now and let's run our tests to see if this works. First of all, I'm going to make sure that I'm actually in the account folder and then I'm going to use go run sorry, just go test dash V and then enter the service folder. For now, I just want to test the service and then I'll hit slash dot, 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 which basically says test any test file in this folder. And so that is passing for the success case. So let's go on and add the error case. Okay. I've now added the error case inside of a T dot run method. You'll see that we do a lot of the same things as before, but this time, we're going to tell our mock that when we call the find by ID method, we'll return nil for the user and just a generic error for the second output parameter. We then create a context using context.todo. Now, if I hover over this, you see that todo returns a non nil empty context. We don't really care what our context is here, but our user services get method requires a context. So we kind of add a blank or empty context. It doesn't have anything, but it's not nil. And then we pass on the user ID that we created above. Finally, we assert that the user returned. You see, we call the method and we return you. We assert that that is nil. And then we assert that the error exists. Finally, we want to make sure that our mock user repository is called because no other error should be returned before the user repository is called. All right, let's run this test once again. I'll just go to my terminal and hit up. And this time we should see two tests passing. So we have the test get success and the test get error. All right, I hope that wasn't too brutal or at least slightly less brutal than last time. Thanks again for following along. Please consider liking this video and subscribing to this channel if you're finding this stuff useful. 
Next time, we'll direct our attention to adding a handler for logging in a user with email address and password. The handler and testing will have a lot in common with the handler we previously tested, except that this time, we'll actually need to validate the incoming email and password included inside of a JSON request body. Anywho, ciao, hasta luego.